today's declaration is I am rejoicing in the Lord. I wonder how you are today. Are you rejoicing? Are you sad? Are you tired? Are you fed up? You might be feeling all sorts of things. The other day, uh, on Wednesday, day before lockdown, I took redemption to a play group that had just reopened. It was so fun. He was thrilled playing with other little ones and new toys. And as we left and we came home and there was impending lockdown the next day, I felt so sad. My heart sunk. And I thought, oh, Lord, what a robbery for all these children being robbed of growth and interaction and socialising and all of this stuff. And I just felt, oh, and I was really tempted to go into kind of like hopeless place of oh, heaviness and bleh. And I was reminded of last week's declaration where we talked about pray without ceasing, rejoice always in all things, give thanks. And I was like, yeah, okay, rejoice. Okay, it's, you know, Lord, you, you command us to rejoice, but what do we rejoice in? And I really had this revelation moment of it's not just rejoice in circumstance because circumstance isn't always easy to rejoice in. There might not be things right, obviously, on your plate to rejoice in at the moment. Life might be really tough. But we can rejoice in the Lord. He never changes. He stays the same. His promises are, f are true. He is faithful. And as Christians, we have, we're citizens of another kingdom. And we live in two places at the same time. Yes, we have feet are planted here on earth. But all, more real is what is going on in our spirit. Our spirit is eternal. We're seated in heavenly places with Christ. We have a full inheritance. We're co heirs with Jesus. Everything that he has inherited from the Father, we get to share. We are dead raisers. We have the power to heal the sick, cast out demons, cleanse lepers, banish COVID. You know, that is something worth rejoicing in, our inheritance in the Lord. And in the fact that he's our good shepherd and that he leads us by still waters and that he restores our soul and that he provides for us and that he gives us peace that the world can't give. Those are things worth rejoicing in. And often people say, you know, the mountain tops are amazing, but it's in the valleys that you really grow. And it's hard to grow on the mountain tops. And in this area of rejoicing in the Lord, that's definitely that ties in with that. When things are tough, it is an opportunity to grow godly character. Because when things are tough, that's when you have to choose. Choose to rejoice, choose to thank, choose to trust. When things are easy, you don't have to choose, you go with the flow. But it's when you have to choose that character, godly character is developed, faith is grown, trust is grown, which are, they produce good fruit. That is good fruit. And as we walk more and more in those good fruits, we will be walking in peace and joy and we will not be shaken. We will be standing as Ephesians, is it Ephesians 2 about the full armor tells us to stand after all of this to stand as we produce these good fruits of godly character, of rejoicing, of trust, of faith, of perseverance, we will be able to stand whatever is thrown at us, whichever way the world goes, whatever happens in politics, whatever happens all around us, we will be able to stand with our eyes fixed on the Lord, unshaken by the storms, rejoicing in him because he is our salvation, he is our hope, he is our delight, he is our portion, he's what we get up for in the morning. Isn't that awesome? When things are difficult, you get to say, I mean, just the things are stripped away and we see what do we really get up for in the morning. And when it's the Lord who we get up for, when it's his intimacy that we crave above everything else, we will be rich. We will have a wealth in our spirit that is unstoppable and that world cannot give. So I bless you today with courage and faith and strength to rejoice in the face of whatever you might be facing, to rejoice in the Lord.